Imagine for a moment a world where the sacred figures of Jesus, his mother Mary, and their community are revealed to be black. It might stir a sense of disbelief as the image etched in our minds is that of a white Jesus with flowing blonde locks and piercing blue eyes. This vision extends to his mother and his people, all cloaked in the same fair hue. For centuries, this narrative has been reinforced by age-old artworks that depict Jesus as a white man. Yet, what if I told you that these paintings have been altered, that the true colors have been masked, and the figures have been transformed to resemble modern Europeans? This act of historical deception has painted over the truth for ages. But now, Russia has unlocked the doors to its ancient vaults and cellars, revealing untouched paintings from centuries past. These artworks hold the potential to rewrite history and transform our understanding of Jesus, his mother, and their people. What secrets do they hold, and how might they reshape our perception of these revered figures? Hello and welcome to a fresh episode of History Bazaar, your go-to destination for captivating discussions on black African history, culture, arts, and civilization. Step into a realm where the essence of black Africa breathes life into its tales and defining moments. Today, we'll unveil the mysteries of paintings nestled in Russian vaults, revealing a black Jesus, a black Virgin Mary, and black Israelites. Let's embark on this journey. Russia recently captured the world's gaze by unveiling religious masterpieces that sparked a whirlwind of intrigue. President Vladimir Putin orchestrated the relocation of one of Russia's most cherished icons from its museum sanctuary to a cathedral in Moscow. These once concealed treasures, shrouded in secrecy for ages, now stand before the public eye, reshaping our understanding of Jesus, Mary, and their followers. But in what way? Curiously, cathedrals worldwide house artworks akin to Russia's hidden gems. Yet, there's a striking distinction. The Russian depictions present Jesus, Mary, and their companions in ebony hues. This variance, while subtle, has ignited debates over the authenticity of European paintings. Dating back to the 19th century, these Russian revelations predate any suspicion of forgery. At that time, Russia's ties with the Byzantine Empire were so intimate that any discrepancies in religious art would have been immediately apparent. Thus, it's conceivable that the Byzantine Church also portrayed these sacred figures with darker skin tones. Before we delve into the reasons behind these differences, let's explore the contents of these paintings, termed Russian icons. This vast array of artistry captures the life and times of Jesus. Father Vladimir Ivanov, in his exploration of Russian iconography, delves deep into the history, symbolism, and spiritual essence of these venerated works. His book, Russian Icons, offers a panoramic view of this art form, touching upon its multifaceted nature. Despite the diversity of scenes, a unifying theme emerges, the portrayal of Jesus, Mary, the individuals, and even angels, all in rich, dark tones. Father Ivanov sheds light on the artistic methods of Russian icon creation, from the egg tempera paint to the gold leaf and the traditional techniques that give life to these sacred images. The book also examines the pivotal role of icons in Orthodox worship, from veneration to processions, highlighting their profound influence on the faithful spiritual journey. Some pieces even reach back to the pre-Christian era. Take, for instance, Andrew Rublev's Trinity, which depicts the biblical tale of three angels visiting Abraham, an event seen as a prefiguration of the Holy Trinity. Yet, what captivates in this artwork is the dark complexion of the figures, a stark contrast to the pale portrayals often seen in Western art. Similarly, the Russian depiction of Saints Peter and Paul, pivotal figures in Christianity's dawn, challenges the traditional imagery with their melanated visages. St. Peter, with his venerable white beard and apostolic garb, stands as a testament to his foundational role in the Church's history. In the hallowed halls of history, St. Peter stands, keys in hand, 
a solemn guardian to the celestial gates as the scriptures of the New Testament whisper his sacred duty. St. Paul, with his beard flowing like wisdom's river, dons the garb of Rome, his dual heritage as Jew and Roman citizen etched into his very being. A book clasped in his hands, he is the voice that echoed through the ages, his letters weaving the fabric of Christian thought and belief. Both martyrs, Peter and Paul, embrace their final breaths for their unwavering faith. Peter upon an inverted cross, Paul under the swift blade of execution. Then behold the masterpiece, the sign, where the Theotokos, the Holy Virgin Mary, stands, arms wide in supplication, her soul facing the heavens. Angels gather, a celestial audience to her silent prayer. She does not glow with earthly whiteness, but radiates a divine light, a beacon of miracles, her presence a shield, her grace a guide, her blessings a balm to the weary souls seeking solace. In the revered Theotokos of Bogolubovo, her visage is a tapestry of dark hues, a portrait of divine motherhood, her eyes locked in a tender gaze upon the Christ child. Her robes, a cascade of sanctity, speak of her exalted station as the mother of God. And in the annals of the Old Testament, St. Michael emerges, a warrior of shadowed armor before Joshua, the bearer of Moses' mantle. This celestial commander, sword drawn, stands as a testament to the Almighty's might. Lastly, the savior of Yaroslavl looms, a figure of solemn judgment and boundless love. Christ, with skin kissed by the sun, sits enthroned, the gospel in his grasp, his countenance a serene command, his very essence, the word made flesh, the savior of all. Gaze into the depths of his all-knowing eyes, and you'll find a universe of wisdom, a divine spark that sees through the veil of existence. In the heart of Yaroslavl, Russia, rests the savior of Yaroslavl, a masterpiece of Russian iconography that breathes life into the region's rich artistic legacy. Are you feeling the connection? If so, show your love, like, share, and subscribe for more soul-stirring stories from Black Africa. Now, let's dive deeper. Behold, Saviour in a Golden Reza, where Jesus Christ is magnificently robed in gold, commanding the spotlight. The Reza, a sacred metal cloak in Orthodox Christianity, often wrought in gold or silver, cradles the icon in reverence. Jesus, with a halo of sanctity, bears a visage of profound melanin richness, a testament to his earthly embodiment. The Golden Reza's intricate artistry, adorned with patterns, carvings, and sometimes jewels, echoes the deep veneration for Christ's image and the splendor of the divine. Turning our gaze to the revered Theotokos of Vladimir, we witness the tender embrace of the Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, God-bearer, cradling the infant Jesus. Their complexions, rich and dark, speak volumes of their shared humanity and divinity. Mary, a portrait of serenity, supports her son with a mother's touch, her fingers brushing his cheek, while Jesus, in childlike innocence, blesses us with his tiny hand. In the hallowed silence of the vaults lies Oost Yuganunciation, capturing the pivotal moment of the Annunciation. Here, Gabriel and Mary, both adorned in the beauty of their black skin, stand devoid of the traditional fair skin, blue eyes or blonde hair, marking a moment of celestial wonder. Elusa, the Greek embodiment of tenderness, draws us into an intimate moment between Mary and Jesus, their cheeks pressed together in a silent symphony of maternal love and divine compassion. Their dark, almost black complexions weave a narrative of closeness that transcends the canvas. In Our Lady of St. Theodore, we see the Virgin as the protector of empires, her hand raised in blessing, with Jesus nestled in her arms. Both are depicted with a deep, rich blackness, challenging the conventional portrayal of whiteness. And it's not just Jesus and Mary, the Jesus with John the Baptist and the Virgin shows them all in dark majesty, standing in judgment and intercession, 
a powerful representation of authority and grace. Their dark complexions are not just a detail, they are a statement, a conversation about identity and representation that spans centuries. So, as we journey through these sacred images, let's reflect on the colors that paint our history and the stories they tell. When we gaze upon these ancient canvases, they whisper tales of Jesus' lineage and skin tone, echoing through time and stirring the soul. The notion of Jesus' black roots holds profound historical weight, anchoring him in a distinct era alongside his disciples. For ages, Western art has painted Jesus as a man of light complexion, with flowing locks of light brown or golden strands and eyes like the summer sky. Yet, the sacred texts remain silent on his visage, hinting that perhaps he bore little resemblance to this common image. Scriptures sketch a portrait of Jesus as a Jewish man, his life beginning in Bethlehem, then flourishing in Nazareth's embrace in the dawn of the first century. The Bible speaks of his ministry's inception in his thirties, yet it shies away from detailing his features, save for suggesting he held no striking allure or distinctive physical trait. Revelation offers a glimpse, painting Jesus with traits akin to those of African descent, hair as pure as wool, eyes ablaze, and feet aglow as if forged in bronze. But why does Russia's sacred art diverge, casting Jesus and his followers in darker hues? It's a tale of separation from the Byzantine church, in an age when religious icons were stripped of their color. This schism traces back to the Mongol surge, the Golden Horde's grip on Russia, which reshaped its bond with the Byzantine realm and the wider Christian tapestry. As the 20th century dawned, the Mongols unfurled their banners wide, carving out an empire vast and unbroken. Their march brought them to Russia's doorstep. Before this storm, Russia stood in the Byzantine shadow, its faith a mirror of imperial creed. But then the Mongols shattered the Russian realms, their unity in tatters. At the Sit River's banks, the Mongols claimed victory, their rule cast over the land, the Golden Horde demanding tribute from Russian crowns. The occupation wove a new narrative for Russia's ties with Byzantium and Christendom. Once, Russia looked to Constantinople as its spiritual beacon. But the Mongol tide severed these bonds, cutting off paths of communion and trade, their rule at times clashing with the Russian church's decree. It's said that before this upheaval, Russian and Byzantine art shared a kindred brush. Yet, as Europe began to bleach its sacred images, Russia, under the Horde's yoke, preserved the original palette for another year. Thus, Russia stands as a solitary guardian of religious art, where Jesus and his flock are portrayed in their true colors while Europe's canvases grew pale. But could time have cast a shadow over the paintings nestled in Russian vaults? Some in Europe hold that Jesus, his mother, and their kin were fair-skinned, their images merely darkened by the relentless march of years. Consider this. The argument seems fragile, almost transparent in its frailty. For if time truly etched its mark on the sacred canvases of European churches, wouldn't every hue succumb to shadow? Yet they stand defiant, unaltered by the years. And if aging were indeed the thief of vibrancy, why then has it only stolen the flesh tones, leaving garments and details untouched? Curiously, Russian artistry tells a different tale, where whites and lights remain unyielded, suggesting intention, not accident, in the darker complexions of Jesus and his mother. Could it be a deliberate stroke of truth? Ponder this. Do the shades of skin in these ancient, unaltered works challenge the long-held belief of a European-looking Jesus, his mother, and his followers? Or do they reveal a reality, a depiction of a black Jesus? I invite you to share your reflections below. Would you wish to witness these Russian paintings in their museum halls? To keep up with our engaging content, consider subscribing to our channel. Press the bell icon to get notifications for future videos. We focus on Black Africa, exploring its captivating history, vibrant arts, 
diverse culture and interesting facts the world should know. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay tuned.